I'd like you to be upstanding because we are in the presence of royalty, obviously. We have this beautiful princess cake and I challenge you to find a little girl that doesn't totally adore it for her birthday. What's fantastic about this cake is that you can change the colours to suit your theme or even to suit your favourite character, obviously. Um, we have blondes, we've got brunettes, we've got redheads, makes fantastic mermaids, um, and also black hairs and all different skin tones. So you can have a look on the internet, um, on the website to, to check out which one you'd like. Um, I'm also going to just talk to you about the cake that I've used today, um, this is her without her clothes on. Um, I'm actually going to make today a snow whitey looking sort of cake. So we're going to do it in yellow and obviously I've put um, this cake on, on one of our coloured boards. So it's really easy to um, colour coordinate. With. So what I've used here is I've used um, a, it's called a wonder mould. We sell a baking tin that's called a wonder mould. And basically it is like a tiffin pan, but it has a metal rod that goes all the way through it. And it is a really, really fantastic tin. Because actually if you just got a Pyrex bowl and you put your baking um, mix into it you um, it will take you quite a long time to bake the middle of it because it's so deep but what this metal rod in the middle of the of the wonder mold does is it makes sure that the the mix um, cooks evenly so this is one kilo of our uh, vanilla Madeira mix and I whisked it up put it in the wonder mold I actually covered the top of the mold uh, of the tin with um, foil um, and then stuck it in the oven for I think it was about 50 minutes to an hour but keep checking it and put um, a knife or a skewer or something in it just to make sure that it is cooked the whole way through you do need to do that so once it comes out of the oven leave it to cool and I've actually cut it twice and I've um, inserted jam and buttercream so jam and buttercream, jam and buttercream, put it all one on top of the other and I've coated it in buttercream. So now we're ready to decorate. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make her underskirt. I'm going to take, um, I reckon you need about 200 grams of white icing. You knead it till it's nice and soft. Make sure you've got some icing sugar so it doesn't stick to your worktop. And then you need to make sure that you roll out, use your rolling pin as a measure, I'm going to roll out to here. So we need it about half the length of the rolling pin. Okay, let's have a look. Yep, yeah, that's about half length and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut a triangle okay like so and then I'm going to take the point put it to the top and then just drape the rest down the front and then cut the excess off and just tidy it up around the bottom. Okay, happy so far? That's the easy part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, emboss the underskirt with um, one of the Blossom plunger cutters. It's a really quick and easy way to decorate the underside of the skirt. So um, the way to do this is um, number one, you need to make sure they look evenly spaced out. And the other thing is, is don't push too hard. You're not actually cutting out. All you're doing is embossing. So literally just gently and evenly emboss the underside. Okay, so they're evenly spaced out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take some sugar pearl balls. I'm going to empty them into, into the lid for ease. And then with a little bit of edible glue on the end of your brush, I'm just going to brush a little bit in the middle of each of the flowers and then a little bit fiddly I know, but I'm going to take one of the balls and just push them in to each one. 
Okay, I've now put yellow pearl balls in the middle of all the little blossom flowers and now what we're going to do is I'm going to use a pearl lustre spray to spray the underskirt to give it like a satiny, nice shimmery feel. Um, if you wanted, you could actually decorate the whole of this cake and go bonkers with it and actually just cover the whole cake in and it will just give it a shimmery. It won't change the colour, it will just give it a satiny, pearly, shimmery look. So again, short, sharp squirts all over the central triangle um, and when it dries it will give that really lovely shimmery look. Okay, I'm just going to leave that over there, leave that on the corner. Okay, now to the overskirt, I'm going to use a yellow, um, I've, um, I've used quite a pale yellow colour here, I don't want it too bright and I've kneaded it to make it nice and soft. I've got about a kilo's worth of sugar paste here and I want to roll it into a rectangle shape. And just a little bit of icing sugar to stop it sticking. And then show you I want a, I want a rectangle to literally wrap around my cake. Now don't roll it too thin, you want it decent thickness. I always think with novelty cakes when you're wrapping something around you don't want it too thin. And again let's use the measurement so we want it pretty much half so the, the width um, of the, um, the the short side of the of the sugar paste we want the same height which is about half of the rolling pin so that's about right. And another way of guiding how much you need, if you put your rolling pin at the beginning of where you need it and just roughly go round, in fact it pretty much is just short of the rolling pin. So then you can put your rolling pin onto your sugar paste and I know that that's going to be long enough now. Okay, so I'm now going to take my cake. You need to do this quite quickly. I'm going to lift up the sugar paste, make sure it's not stuck. Now don't worry about whether you cover um, the underskirt or not because we haven't put any glue or anything on it so it won't stick to it. So we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're almost going to cloak the cake with the yellow icing, okay, like so. So I'm picking it up and I'm literally cloaking the cake. Can you see around the outside? Just making sure that every single piece, like so, is covered. Okay? Now I'm going to open this up and with my knife, so I'm opening it up. Can you see to where it needs to be cut? And I'm going to use as a guide and I'm going to just cut up like so, and whip that bit off. Don't worry if it's too short because we're going to have a nice piece of frill that's going to cover that up. Okay, but try and get it as near as you possibly can. So mine's gone over a little bit there, but I'm not going to worry about that because I will be able to cover it up. And then I'm literally just going to cut the top off like so. Okay, and then just using your hands, very gently just cover the rest of the cake and then with the knife very gently making sure you don't cut too high up into the cake in fact if anything cut it so it's slightly longer all the way around to create the skirt Okay. Okay, we're now going to make the frills to edge the skirt and I'm going to use a reversible cutter, the reversible cutter set and I'm going to, it doesn't really matter which one you use, I'm actually going to make the, I'm going to use the second largest one. Now I'm going to use this because this is probably what you've got at home, this is what you make your scones with and, and obviously you can cut out cupcake tops with them. And what we actually use, professional cake decorators, use something called a garret frill and this is a garret frill cutter set. Um, it is a circular frill 
and you can basically take the middles out and depending on what, which circle you put in the middle depends on how deep your frill is going to be. Okay, so if you like doing um, frills, then this is a really good cutter to get. But we're not going to use that today. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use, as I say, this cutter set and I'm going to use the fluted edge for the actual frill and then I'm going to cut my middle out with a smaller, with a smaller one. Okay, so back to our sugar paste. Now we're going to do two frills, two layers of frills. You can do as many as you like. You can do one. If it scares you doing frills, you can just do one layer. You see here. Yeah, or we can do two like we've done here. Or actually you can just continue and you can have the whole cake as frills, which would look pretty stunning. I'm just going to roll this out. Roll this out quite thin really. We want it probably a couple of millimetres thick. Okay, again, make sure that it's not stuck to your worktop. In fact, if anything, I'm going to take a little bit of icing sugar there and put it underneath because we really don't want this to stick. Okay, so I'm going to take my fluted cutter and then I'm going to take the smaller one into the middle, okay, the straight side and then cut out again. And as you can see, that makes that frill. Now, this is the technique that I'm going to show you. Now this might need a couple of goes, a couple of practices. But I'm going to show you how to frill this sugar paste. I'm using a, the back of a um, paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the paintbrush end nearly up to the inner side can you see that the inner side there okay and then I'm going to press down with not a lot of force but a little bit of force and I'm going to roll backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and can you see as I'm putting the tension onto the sugar paste it's frilling Okay, so it's a backwards and forwards motion. One, two, three, release. One, two, three, release. One, two, three. Don't go backwards and forwards too much because if you do it too much, it will actually start sticking. And then when you try and pull away the paintbrush handle, it will tear. But backwards and forwards, as I say, give this a little practice first because it does take a little bit of getting used to all the way around. If it does tear, don't worry too much because we're going to turn this around the other way after we've frilled the whole circle. Okay, so once we get to the end, we've now got our full frill. A little bit of edible glue. And I'm going to just paint a little bit of edible glue all down that side And now to open up the frill, I'm just going to cut the incision in there and open it up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over. Okay, so we're using the other side. Okay, and then we're going to literally just attach it to the edge of the yellow overskirt. Okay, and when we get to the top, cut the top off. You get to the bottom, cut the bottom off, make sure it's attached. And then you're taking a soft bristle brush, just flick, flick those edges up so that they lift up and frill. Okay. And because we're using sugar paste here, it's quite soft. So it will naturally try and flip back down again. But again, leave it a couple of minutes and then go back and give it another little flick. And where the sugar paste is becoming stiffer, uh, the frills will stay. Okay. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. And then I'll show you how to put the second frill on. 
Okay, so now I've put the yellow frills down each side and I've also put um, an, an outer frill in white. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm just, again, gluing. So where your, where your yellow frill joins the cake, I'm just putting a little bit of glue there. And I'm going to, again, cut the frill to open it up and turn it, turn it over. So we're using the other side. And then just attach it just so that it just falls just short of the of the yellow frill so that you can see both of them. Take the top off, take the bottom off, and again flick the frills to get maximum flounce because that's what we want. Okay, so now we've got our double frills on our, on our skirt. I'm now going to cover up the uneven joins that sometimes you get. Um, I mean, obviously, if you, if, you, if you did your outer one yellow, the same color, you wouldn't get so much of a join, but I just like the fact that it's white, yellow, white, and then yellow, I think it looks nice. So I'm, I'm going to cover up this join. I've rolled out a, a thin piece of sugar paste, um, and I'm using a small blossom plunger cutter from the blossom plunger, plunger cutter set. And I'm going to, again, draw a thin line of glue all the way up the join. And I'm going to just add a pretty row of red flowers all up this side and all up this side. Okay, we're now going to put the dress on the upper part of the body. I'm actually going to take um, our black haired lady um, and I'm going to cover her chest, her back and her waist in glue. I'm not going to worry about this bit around the bottom here because actually we're going to start our upper dress from probably about five millimeters above the start here, just so that we've got enough space to put her into the top of the dress. So I've done another frill here, and again, I'm going to cut it. And then holding her head like that, I'm going to start off the frill here, and I'm literally going to just wrap it and spiral it around her body. So when I go round again, I'm obviously just going to edge upwards a little bit. Can you see that? So that I'm going up, and then when I come round again, okay, when I get to there, oops, a little bit more glue. And I've run out of frill, so I'm going to have to make another one. So I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, so I'm back again. I've put more glue over her chest and I'm, I'm going to cover up slightly where I left off. Like so. And then I'm just going to continue to wrap around her back and then come back to the, oops, that's it come back to the front. In fact, I'm going to stop it under her arm there. So I've got the join there under her arm, like so. Don't worry about any joins because, actually no, I better go a bit further up than that. It looks a bit too low cut. So I'm just gonna put one more. Like so. Don't worry about the joins under the arms because you won't be able to see them because obviously she's not gonna have a arms up the whole time, like so. Okay. Okay, now the skirt's finished and um, the upper dress is finished on the lady, all we need to do now is to put a little bit of glue at the top of the cake and um, use her head to do this so you don't damage any of the frills. Make sure that she gets in the middle, okay, and just pierce her into the top of the cake, like so. 
Now it's totally up to you how you want to decorate her. Again, using the blossom cutter, you can give her a choker, making her look very pretty. Okay, you could almost put them in her hair as well. You could put them around her wrists. You can do anything you like. You could even put them all around here. I think they look absolutely gorgeous and I'm sure that your little girl will too.